Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Matt and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to hang a door. So let's get on with it. So first of all, you wanna get yourself some butt hinges. I've got some fire rated chrome um, four inch butt hinges from Howden's. Um, I got with the set, I got these uh, chrome hinges with the set, but I'm gonna be mounting a fire door. So you need a lot more hefty hinges for a fire door because it's heavier. I've got one fire door and one normal door. So fire door you can see here, is a lot heavier. Uh, it comes in uh, 44 millimeters in width, but you can hear it's a lot more solid than this normal door that I've got. It just feels hollow. Um, it's much, much lighter, easier to move than the other one. Um, but yeah, so the first thing you need to do is to decide which way you're gonna be opening the door itself. Um, I'm gonna be opening the door into this room because I don't want to take space away from the bedroom. If you're putting it into the bedroom, you'd need to put the um, hinge on this side. If you're pulling it out of the bedroom, you're going to be pulling the door out this way. So the hinge needs to be on this side. Um, and also I'm hinging it on that side because I want to be, be able to reach in and touch this light switch here. So first thing is grab your hinge, measure in 15 centimeters in from the top, 15 centimeters in from the bottom, or between 15 and 20 centimeters. I'm using 15 because I want the door to be nice and solid and held as far away from the center as possible so that it's nice and rigid in the frame. Then get the hinge and sort of feel for where the, it, it comes up to the edge and then go up to where your 15 centimeter mark is. You can see I've marked it there. And then draw around the hinge and do that both at the top and bottom. And then come over here and have a look at the hinge itself. So when the door is closed, you are, imagine if you're, if you're hanging the door right now, the door would be touching this edge here and, and the lining would be touching the other edge. But what we wanna do is have a nice even gap around the door of about two to three millimeters. The width of this uh, lining itself is about 766 in width and the door is 762. So we've got four millimeters to play with, two millimeters on each side. So if we want a two millimeter gap on each side, then we need to measure where the door, what the door is gonna look like when it's closed. So we've got the distance between each edge here, it's about eight millimeters. So if we want a two millimeter gap, then we've got to take two millimeters off eight millimeters, which means that we need to sink in. We need to take out of the door lining in the door three millimeters on each side. So with a multi-tool, I'm basically gonna, you can use either a chisel or multi-tool. What I'm gonna do is take out this section to a three millimeter depth. So basically drawing a line of three millimeters up here, cutting into the door, door frame, and then drawing exactly the same thing on this and cutting into the, um, the, the door itself. But first of all, I'm going to do it on the, the frame and then put the door in the position I want it because it's not gonna be touching the floor. I'm gonna be raising it off the floor with packers to where I want it, drawing a line on the door where exactly where I want the hinge to be because um, like I said, you don't want it to touch the floor. It's gonna be raised off the floor. And then afterwards, once I've drawn that line, I'm going to cut it out of the door afterwards. But I'm gonna start off doing that now. So just to show you what's happened here, I've just sliced out across the edge here, around that line that I've marked out, and you can see that I've taken it to that sort of three millimeter depth that I've marked on the edge there as well. Now I'm just gonna go in from this edge and chop out the rest of it. So 
So once that's been notched out, you can get your hinge and offer it up against the hole that you've just cut out. It looks to me like the metal isn't even flush up against this yet. There seems to be a little bit of a lump here, so I'm gonna take away a little bit more of it. It needs to be, this needs to be sunk in at least by a millimetre um, below this, the wood, the top of the wood here, because the thickness of this uh, metal is about two mil. So I'm gonna take a little bit more out of it and then offer it up again. I've had another go at that now, and you can have a look here and see that it's fitting a lot nicer in there. And at the bottom there, you can see that we've got a nice sort of one millimetre gap at the bottom. Uh, so this is gonna fit nicely up against the door once it's closed. And we can see from the side here that that is in fact flush in there. And it's slightly behind the wood there. So we'll probably have a one or two millimetre gap on this side. Next, get your hinge into the hole and you're gonna mark out the positions where you're actually gonna pilot hole the uh, screw holes. And this moves up and down very slightly. So what I'm gonna do is put it, push it right down to the bottom because with the door weight on there, um, you don't want anything to move at all. So um, it's better to put, make everything locked so that nothing can slip down at all when, once the door is hung. So what I'm gonna do is push that down to the bottom and then mark exactly in the center of every single one of these holes with a pen. And then very, very carefully drill right in the center to pilot hole um, each of these positions so that, because when you pilot hole, these are all countersunk. When you put the screw in, that countersink on the sink on the screw will also affect the position of the the hinge. So, like if you countersink it slightly off to the right, the hinge is going to go like that. If you countersink it slightly to the left, it'll be fairly it'll be all right. But you don't want it to be raised and sticking out of here. So do it as exactly central as possible, and then drill that drill those pilot holes nice and centrally. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'm adjusting it as I go along to make sure that it doesn't move out of the position that I started with and then going all the way through and finishing it off. So all these holes are nice and central now so I know that when I screw into them they're going to be they're not going to shift the position of the, the hinge itself so you can see there that's in the center that one that one that one and it's butted up against the bottom there. So once the door is hung, it doesn't slip down at all. So it's a new day now and I'm just finishing this job. I've done the hinge up there and I've also cut the hinge out down here. Um, and now it's time to put the MDF around the door on both sides. And I actually don't have a circular saw working today. The one that I've got is broken. And usually what you can do is you can cut the angle uh, and change the angle on the circular saw so that this angle can be cut out. So instead of just cut it straight, instead of um, cutting the angle on it, you can see here on the circular saw, you can adjust the angle so that you don't, so you can cut, cut it to match the wall, but I haven't got much of an angle on this edge. So but I can show you how to do it. So get yourself a piece of paper, go up against the, the wall there, and just find, just fold it where you find the angle that you want to cut. So you can see that's up against that wall, it's up against that stud. So that's the angle of the cut to be made. And you can just get your circular saw and put this line up against it. So basically get your circular saw like that. Sideways. And match the line that you want to cut with the, the angle of the circular saw. So you can see here, I've got it rest, the paper resting up against there. I'm trying to match the line that's down the middle here of the circular saw blade. So you can approximately get it right, and any, rest, any of the 
the rest of it you can fill with cork. You can see there it's pretty much the right angle. So that's how you would do it. Um, that's just my way of doing it, but instead of doing that, I'll just use a jigsaw, raise this off the ground a little bit, um, and I'll just cut a completely perpendicular line rather than um, using a circular saw. Um, because when you put this on here, you're not cutting it at an angle. You can cut it at an angle, but when you're cutting it in the middle, you're just doing a perpendicular line like that all the way across. Um, so I cut it like that, and what I'm going to do is put this up against the hole that I've got, shift it as far up against the wall there, and then just fill this in with some cork. Um, mask it off and it should be all good. So I've put the first hinge on, uh, but I'm just gonna show you what I did. So obviously it seems pretty simple, but um, you just screw into these holes. But first of all, you wanna make sure that the you screw in the screws so they're not exactly in the center. You wanna screw in the screws that position your hinge where you want it to go. So like for example, this one, uh, it will push the hinge in very slightly that way when um, you screw it in because it's, it's a bit closer to this edge. So that's a good thing because it's gonna keep the hinge in the right position when you screw the rest of them in. So um, I'm gonna start off with the bottom one and then move on to this one here because that's also pushing this, this hinge down and then um, do the rest of them because then by the time you put two in the hinge will stay in exactly the same position that you've, you're holding it in so I'll do that now. Starting off with the bottom one I'm going nice and slowly and just watch what happens to the hinge as it goes in. So that's that's in now and the hinge is packed into that bottom corner as much as it can be. So we wanna keep it in uh, this bottom corner uh, and supported by this bottom notch here as much as possible because it's quite a heavy door. We've got the right hinges on for it, which wanna make sure it doesn't move at all once it's in. So we'll continue on. Next I'm going for that third one up. Hold the hinge in the position you want it as you're screwing it in as well. That's in now. So you can see we've got the two in. It's in the right position we want it on this edge here and the bottom edge here. The next, the final two aren't going to do anything. They're not going to move the hinge left and the right. So uh, I'm just going to screw them straight in. The screws that I'm using are actually chrome screws to match the chrome hinges. They're called hinge tight and they're the 4.5s by 50, uh, 40 mil. Um, and that will that will fit in that will fit the countersink of a fire door hinge because they're quite big. If you're using a smaller countersink, your hinges will be your screws will be moving all the way around the side there, but once it's in, that ends up nice and flush up against the the uh, fire door hinge, so there you go. Those are the largest ones you can get. So now I've marked out the positions of the hinges on the door itself with the biro. I've also got the three millimeter depth mark as we did before on the frame. And I've used the exact same size that's gonna be going on the door to mark um, the, the position because they differ very, very slightly and that will affect in minute amounts the amount the, of the height that it will be off the ground. So um, this side is on the frame here. So I've used this side for marking the positions out. Just thought I'd show you as I'm doing this, the easiest way to notch out these things is to cut um, the outside line out first to the three millimeter depth you can see here, and then cut strips 
in at three millimeters as well. And then as you go across, you cut out those sections and you can see as you're going how far, what position the multi-tools ended up in. Cause sometimes you, you can go in at a slight angle and the, the following line on the next strip is in a different position. Um, so when you're cutting it, just to make sure you're readjusting yourself every time you go in, you can just cut those notches out and then afterwards just plane it off. Um, just make it as flat as you can with the multi-tool um, and then you'll get it much more even rather than just plunging in as deep as you can and then having a, like a, a chamfered notch out, which makes it very difficult to hang the door afterwards. So just to show you, you can see here that that hasn't cut through all the way at three millimeters at the end. Just to focus on that. I don't know if you can see that, but just at the end there, it's not the right depth. So I'm just gonna go in with the tool and um, just chip out, chisel out that sort of end bit very carefully. Just, just be as delicate as possible because you can't add more material, but you can take away little bit by little bit. So that looks like it needs a little bit more off the bottom edge here. The top looks all right and the sides look all right. So I'm gonna keep going at it. That feels pretty good now. I'm gonna take a little bit off the top there. I think that's pretty much there. So now I'm just gonna check if that's in the right sort of position. I've got about a millimeter extra in depth at the top and bottom here, and the same at the top. So that notches in. It's about a millimeter at the top and the bottom there, extra. So I know that that's in a two, it's at a three mil depth. It's at a three mil depth at the, the liner. So I should have two millimeters on this uh, side where the hinges are, two millimeters at the top. And when it's finished, there should be two millimeters on this side as well. So I'm gonna now screw these hinges into the door and then uh, hang the door and I'll show you how that happens. So that's all done up there. All the holes have been drilled. Now I'm just gonna do the bottom ones. Sometimes the drill bit doesn't go in at the right position when you start with, so it moves around like this. So if you get it in the wrong position, what you can do is go the opposite angle and then turn the drill afterwards so you're like turning a corner and drill in. So you saw me do it just there. But I'll just show you again if it happens. It's slightly too low, so I'm going to go up a bit and then turn. And now it's in the right now it's in the right position. So there we go. That's all the holes drilled. that wasn't as great a job, but I've managed to get them all in the center. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the hinge back in the frame. So first of all, get your hinges in a position where you can screw in from the back and put the same amount of packers at the bottom of this edge, as you did previously when you were putting it in the door position. And do the same, the same up there. And then when you're putting the door out this way, you need someone to help hold it. Uh, I'm just gonna wing it, but 
you you just put a, another level of packers in there just to stop the door from tilting forwards but it doesn't need to be exact uh, probably probably about seven millimeters on this door uh, edge and then i'm just going to screw it in um, and then the door will be floating on its own and we'll close the door and see what the gap looks like around the edges So now I've got the eight millimeters of packers under this edge where we started with eight mil and I've packed that out to wherever the floor position ends there because the floor goes up and down very slightly. Um, and now I've leaned the door up against this hinge. So I'm not holding it at all, but this hinge is holding it up. All I need to do now is screw that in there, that in there, that in there, that in there, and then do the same at the bottom and the door will be hung. So I'm gonna do that now. show you there it's in nice and tight tight to the bottom edge and that's the important thing because that's holding the oh, actually no it's the top edge that's important but this is in nice and tight now so it's um it's all screwed in so now just screw the top one in there that's in nice and tight on the door and i'm just going to do the bottom one and then the, the door will be hung so i'm just going to show you that now So, we can now open and close the door. There we go, look at that. Now I've closed the door here and it's not actually quite right because the distance here and here is different. Um, so the door won't fully close because we've got, we haven't notched out enough. So it's very, very, it's just on the verge there of closing. But I need to take off an extra mil on both sides here to push this door in a bit. The top is fine, it's got two mil on the top. But that to me looks like it's about four mil. And here looks like about two and a half. So I'm gonna take a little bit off the top, uh, notching out on the door and the, on the liner, and then I'm gonna give it another go to close. So there we go, the door is now hanging on its own. We've got a nice even gap at the top even gap at the sides and the bottom has a slightly larger gap because the, the floor is slightly uneven. You would have a larger gap at the bottom if you had carpet as well. But the door is now hanging and so you can open and close it on its own. Nice and smoothly, doesn't touch the ground at all. And um, yeah, very pleased with that. Next thing is to put the door stop in, which is basically a strip of wood. And it's basically this flimsy bit of wood usually pretty bent and stuff but you basically just need to stick one of those cut it to size the height of the door lining that i started off with was 1990 so i'll cut it off at 1990 and then take a measurement of your door thickness the door that i'm using is 45 mil or approximately 44 and a half and then i've got all these little dots that i've marked in here that are 45 millimeters in from the edge where the door will close. And just drill holes through this, then countersink them, and then plop it in, plop those screws in where you've got your markings so that you can push this up to the marking point because obviously this piece of wood is not very straight like I showed you. So just move it up to the marker and then screw in. Um, Pre-drill the holes up to the marker point so that it doesn't move when you when you're screwing it in. This wood will split easily, so you do need to countersink it. And then once everything's finished, um, I'll show you how to decorate it in another video. But you need to put filler over these so that these will never be seen. Um, so you can either do that or you can use nails, but I prefer using screws that are much stronger and more solid. So um, 
So go around the whole door doing that. I've got markings all along on the inside. I've not drawn a line because I don't want the line to show up through the paint possibly. So uh, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna show you the final door being that's hung with the door stuff in. So now I've installed all of the door stops at the top and the sides and the door closes nice and evenly with the, um, the door stop evenly spaced all the way around the top and the bottom. So you can see it closes nice and neatly there. And so that concludes the hanging door video. Um, but in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to finish off the wall, uh, both on the inside and the outside, putting all acoustic insulation in. Um, so if you click subscribe, you can see the next video, you'll get a notification. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. It will help more people be able to see it and see how easy it actually is to hang a door. So thank you for watching guys and I'll see you soon.